Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. This is a sixth video in our series um, focused on length with evaluations. So in the first video, we just kind of laid out why evaluations are important. The second video, we laid out the core lengths and the primitives. We then talked about how to build data sets. Um, first, developer curated. We built one for the Databricks, um, the Databricks model, which is discussed in this blog post. So we built a question answer data set. Um, and we showed how to edit that. We showed how to append um, examples to it. We then also showed how to build data sets from user logs. So if you have like an app in production, you're you know, getting feedback or questions from a user, you can basically plumb those into a data set. Um, we then just talked through how to use an evaluator, uh, in our particular case, a uh, built-in life with evaluator to judge our app, which we built here. So we had a very simple app that answers questions about a given context. In this case, we plumbed in the blog post and we're using GPT-3.5 to answer questions. We're comparing those GPT-3.5 uh, generations or, or answers to our data set, which was manually curated. So that's really it. We used uh, a built-in length with evaluator called COTQA, which is very convenient for question answering. So that's kind of where we are. That's what we did. Now let's build on this a little bit. And this would kind of give you a summary of what we just did. Now let's say I want to do something different. I want to find my own custom evaluator. So let's say I want like a simple assertion that actually an answer actually was generated or not. Like, was there some kind of like, um, uh, you know, failure in, in, in generation of the answer such so that, you know, to return some an empty string or, or you know, uh, it, there can be other reasons why an LN fails to, to pr produce a generation, right? So in this case, I'm changing it up a little bit. I stole my data set of question and answer pairs derived from that Databricks blog post. But in this case, I want my grader to be, it's like a heuristic, it's a hard-coded decision. It's just like, is there an answer or not, right? It's reference-free. There isn't like a ground truth there. It's just like, is there an answer or not, right? So it's more like criteria-based uh, grading. In this case, you can, this is where it's a little bit squishy, but you can think of this more as a unit test. It's like a very simple assertion for functionality, um, as opposed to it being an evaluation, which is using like an LM as a judge or a human as judge. This is just like a quick test. Is there an answer present or not? And of course, this can be used, you know, an offline evaluation, potentially some like CI, right? So it's like a nice test or sanity check that my system's actually working. So how would I do that? So it's actually really simple. This little function is actually all you need. But let me actually explain a bit about what's going on here. Remember our flow diagram? Let's actually go back up. So there's this run and there's an example. So the run is my app, basically. My app has some output. Right. So the run has this dot output, which is basically the, the dict or the object that comes out of my app. And then likewise, my example, which I pass an evaluator, also has this dot output, which is basically everything that's available to the example. In my particular case, what I'm going to care about is, you know, in typical evaluations, I often care about just the answer. But the point is, uh, when I'm doing evaluation, there's this example object and there's this run object. And these two things are being compared in some way. So that's really it. So remember, I have an example and a run. Now, if I build my custom evaluator, I plumb in that example and run, just like we just talked about. And I could just easily fish out from the run, which is my LLM app, I want to get the answer. Now, let's actually go all the way back and make sure we understand what we just said. So I'm going to go back to my app. Here's my little app, answer database question open AI. It returns a dict with this answer key. That's where we have that answer thing from. So that key depends on my app. In this case, my app returns, you can see it's, it's like a dict with answer in it. That's it. So that's why in my custom evaluator, when I go down here, I just go to my outputs from the run. Again, it runs my app. The outputs contains everything output by the app. In that case, that output is a dict, but it has a key answer. So I'm fishing it out like that. And I do something really easy. If there's nothing there, then it's not answered. Otherwise it is as simple as it gets. Remember, I have this data set DBRX. I'm going to run on this. So again, here's my app. Basically, we already talked about this. Here's the data set. We already showed how to build that. This is my new little evaluator is answered. Um, I'm going to create a new prefix for it. Uh, it's some new metadata. Kick that off. That should run pretty quick. And I can go over to my data set. It's already done. So, okay, this is kind of interesting. So now you see two evaluations. The first one we showed previously using the built-in uh, light chain evaluator. Now I have this new one. You can see it has this new prefix 
And let's open it up and see. So in this case, those scores are all one because there is an answer every time. That's it. That's a custom evaluator. It shows up here in Langsmith. This scoring is arbitrary. We can choose different means of scoring, but in this particular case, I just chose one or zero. Shows up here. That's it. Pretty simple. Um, and this is extremely flexible. I mean, this is just a function. It can be anything you want. Again, all you need is the ability to fish out your output. You could do string matching. You could do arbitrary different kinds of evaluations. And you can also include, for example, LLMs in this to do arbitrary reasoning over your answers and produce scores. So I've used this a whole lot. It's extremely convenient, very flexible. And building custom evaluators is extremely simple, particularly once you understand that kind of that information flow that we showed here. All that's happening is I have an example. I have a run. Each of those has this dot outputs thing, which gives you access to, in the case of my run, that output object. In my case, it was just a dict with answer. And this dot outputs actually gives you access to everything in this example. That's really it. That's all you need to know. Um, and that's really all, all, all I want to say about building custom evaluators. It's very powerful and very general. Thanks.